Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is more vision for young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today I'll be talking about grieving from debt. These last four or five months have been very crazy months for me, and it's been hard. I've lost three people um, during these last three months, and the Lord brought it up on my heart to talk about the topic of grieving on debt. So I'll be telling you guys about that today. Um, back in April, I was down in Guyana for uh, spring break. Uh, vacation and while I was down there I was enjoying myself uh, I got to see the two people I was always love to see when I'm down there I got to see my grandmother I got to see uh, one of my neighbors I was very close to growing up and I got to see my um family and a whole bunch of other people that I really wanted to see but the two main people was my grandmother and my, and my uh, neighbor uh, those are two people anytime I'm going down there I'm looking forward to see them uh, I had a wonderful trip now three days three or four days before uh, my trip ended and I came back over here that Friday morning. I uh, woke up to the news that my neighbor passed. And when I got that news, uh, it hit me because my neighbor lived right across the street from us. It it, it hit me. And I, I just didn't know how to like respond. Like my body froze in that moment once um, I got that news. Like my body pretty much froze and I just... I just couldn't move. I just didn't know what to say. My mind was all over the place. And at first, I'm like, I don't want to go over there and see the body because the body was still in the house at that time. I think at that time, you um, I never have been dead for, I think, about three, four hours. By the time I got that news, because he died, like, in the morning, I think around, like, four, four or five, or, like, maybe, like, three, like, somewhere between those times. So the body was probably, like, a good four or five hours of already being dead. And... My mother asked me if I wanted to go over and see it. Um, and at first, I wasn't about to go over and um see him because I just didn't want to see him in that state. And I just knew I would have been hurt by it. But I knew that I wouldn't be able to make the funeral because I was leaving um, out of guy in, in um, four days. So right before I went over, I said a prayer. I prayed for him, his family, and I just prayed that I would be able to just go over there and just handle everything. So after I done praying, I went over, um, uh, seen him, and when I told you, when I just saw like that body, even like I kind of froze for a second, like I w I was speechless, because that's the first time I ever seen a body outside of a um funeral home, um. Once they go through the whole process, I haven't prepared for like the funeral and stuff. That was the first time I've ever seen that. And I just, I froze up. Like I, I just froze up. I just didn't know what to say. And then um, uh, his wife asked me, do you want to see him? And I'm like, no way, yes. So I went over and saw him. And because I was already in the house at the time, but I went like directly to the bed that he was and saw him. And I was... I was just saying in my mind, just thank you. Thank you for everything that you ever done for me. Thank you for all those times you took me to the store. Because when I was young, living in Guyana, um, I used to wait by, the, by, my, by my gate every day, wait for um, him. He'll go to, uh, to me with the store, get me some snacks, and then we'll come back. So that was like the routine with me and him. Like I was very close to my day. Like That was one of my favorite people um, that we lived in that area with. And I was very close to him. I loved him. Uh, every single time I went home, uh, to God, and I, I make sure I see him. Him and my grandmother with two people, I make sure I see. If I don't see anybody else, I have to see them two people. And I make sure I always um, go see him. And I try to give a little something, just kind of like pay back for like what he did, even though I knew I never could like pay back him for everything. But I was just try to um, do a little something, give a little something, just to just show my token of um, appreciation. Kind of like, uh, kind of like, you took care of me and I'm going to take care of you. So I was just saying in my mind, thank you so much for all those times that you took me to the store, got me stuff. Thank you for being nice. Thank you for everything. I was just right there. I was just telling him, thank you for every single thing that you've, you've done for me. And I was just very appreciative um, to see him. Um, before this day, uh, right when we got, um, got to Ghana, I think like the first day or the second day, I made sure I saw him. So I saw him, I think two or two or three times before the actual day he died while I was down there. And so I was, I was able to um, see him alive uh, one more time. And 
I was just telling him, thank you. Just thank you. Thank you for every single thing that you have done. And I, and I very much um, appreciate it. And this was around seven something. I had classes that day. So right after I left the house, I went back to my house and I went on, I went on to do my class. And that whole day that was just ringing in my head, ringing in my head. And we was like moving around places with my mother. Cause I was with my mother, I was moving around places, going by her family and stuff like that. And they just kept talking about how he died, how he died. And I, and I just kept getting triggered because I didn't properly process everything. And I just didn't want to, I didn't want to talk more about it. So every single time that I heard it, was I just kept getting triggered. I was just, and my mom just kept being like, yo, can y'all please stop talking about it? Please stop talking about it. Please stop talking about it. Because every single time I hear it, it just was, I just kept getting triggered. I was, it was kept, I don't know how to probably explain, but I just kept getting triggered. I just want everybody to not talk about it. And I didn't cry at all or nothing. Um, I went through this, uh, the, the rest of that trip. I had fun with the other stuff that was playing. And um, when we got, when I got back um, here to America, I think the sixth or seventh day when I got back, I just broke down. Um, I just broke down one day in my room. I was crying. Like I was bawling. Cause that was the first time I broke down over that deck. Cause I didn't break down at all once it came um to the death even when i saw him uh his body just laying on that bed when i when i was when i got the news none of that i didn't cry but i just couldn't hold back my feelings no more i just broke down and i was talking about all the good memories i had with him all the things that he did for me i just broke down crying and i remember i said a prayer after and i was still and after that i was still going through the process of grieving and um everything Everything like that, just still going through my day to day, getting everything done. Um, so April, he died. Now May, um, is the second that which which is my grandmother. The day before, um, we I, the day before she died on Monday. So the day before, I got a warning, um, that uh, her time was about to come because. Uh, we got a call saying that her breathing was going in and out, in and out, in and out. So we kind of knew, like, her her time is, you know, coming soon. So with that, that I was kind of prepared for that day because I kind of, we, I had a heads up that um that that was going to occur. So I, it didn't really surprise me. I got the news, but um I remember, uh, I remember uh, I was, uh, well, I, was, I was in class that day. It was a Monday. And I have my phone on do not disturb because every time I'm in class, I keep my phone on do not disturb so I can just focus on work. And right after I got out of class, I was talking to one of my friends. And I got, I, uh, I took my phone off for do not disturb and I saw the message that my grandmother had died. And when I told you, my body froze. The same way when my neighbor died, my body froze. And I started shedding a little bit of tears, not that much, like fully break down, but a little bit of tears. And I'm like, even though I knew this was going to happen, it just still shook me when I got the news. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, thank God I went to Guyana in April and I got to see my grandmother that one last time. Because my grandmother uh, was a very special lady to me, uh, was one of my favorite people. And my grandmother, <laughs> she didn't play with me. Uh, I was I was bad growing up in Guyana, and I was bad over here too. So uh, when I got over here too, so my grandmother always asked me anytime I see her. Um, when we was living in Guyana, and then when I uh, uh, started living over here too, always asked me the two questions of: Are you behaving yourself? Are you doing good in school? Because um, education was something that she was big on, and then behaving yourself was another thing that she was big on. So the last time when I went to Guyana in April, the last time I saw her live. Um, she got to ask me those questions and those two questions. And at that point, I didn't realize that was going to be my last time hearing those two questions, but I appreciate it very much. And I never got to tell my grandmother this, but I appreciate her asking me those two questions very much because I knew that she wanted the best for me. And she always wanted me to strive for um greatness. When I was getting in trouble all the time, she didn't appreciate it. She always, she knew that that wasn't, that's not Ezra. That's not Ezra. That's not him. And she always just wanted the best for me and me to be my best self to the fullest. So anytime she asked me those questions, like later on, I would have, I appreciate it so much. So when she asked me that question in April, I had to tell her, 
I'm behaving myself. I'm not getting in trouble no more. I'm doing excellent in school. I'm on top of my classes. My grades are high. Like I, I was so proud to be able to tell her. Because before then, um, uh, from all the times she was asking me throughout the years, it was I'm doing okay. <laughs> I was still I was still getting in trouble. I was still my grades were still low and stuff like that. So when I got to ask that question, I got to say proudly that I'm doing good in all areas of my life. So I was very proud, and and she was very proud of me for doing that. So um, I was reminiscing about that when I got the news. And um, I knew I was going down for the funerals. Uh, funeral was in June, so we went down and um, and yeah. And once I got the news, um, I was like, you know what? I got to speak at this funeral. So that same day, I hit one of my aunties. And I was like, uh, I want to speak at the funeral because my grandma never got to see me preach. Um, I'm not sure if she ever saw any of my videos, but I know in person she never got to see me preach. So I'm like, since this is the last time we will be with her, I have to, I have to preach. I have to, I have to say something, whether it's 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute. I don't care what time I'm on there for. I gotta go up there and say something. And uh, I, I, uh, they gave me, they gave me uh, about a minute to go up there. And I was writing my speech. And also with that, um, when I was in Guyana in that April and I was at church because I went to my old church, like I, I was, when I was sitting there in, the, uh, in church, I'm like, yo, I got to, I got to, next time I come back to Guyana, I got to preach, I got to preach here. Because since I was young, it's always been my dream to be able to come back to Guyana and use my talent. Uh, so the video that you guys seen about wild trials and tribulation are important. My first time preaching in Guyana, that 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 dream I had there. So in April, I was like, next time I come back, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. So with now with the, my grandmother's that now I know I'm going back for this. So uh, I hit I hit my old past up and I asked her if I could go up there and say um just say, to go up there and preach for a little bit. And I was I was able to do that. So um, with with me going on this trip, I was able I'm able to do two things that I really want to do: speak at my grandmother's funeral, and then speak at my church. Um, and days leading up to that, I'm writing both my speech, um, practicing it, doing all of that. And um, we went down. I remember we we got down there that Saturday. Um. Got down there early because I flight landed early in the morning, got to the house, uh, all of that. Um, and we we just enjoyed ourselves, just had fun and stuff. And then later that night was later that night was a reflection night. I spoke at the reflection night. Next day was my time to speak at my church, which you guys see the video where I tried to the report. That video was recorded that day, um, the Sunday. So the second day that I was a guy enough for that funeral. Um I was able to preach and then late at night that's when we had the um wake night and then the following day was the uh funeral and the funeral was an amazing funeral um for my grandmother they made sure that she looked good everything um went good with it uh i didn't end up going i didn't uh end up going to the casket to see my grandma because i honestly uh scared i was scared i was so scared I, I just didn't i just didn't i was like i can't do that i can't do that so i didn't do it um and then i spoke I spoke at the church. I was up there for a minute. Uh, I spoke about um, that, how that God, I don't remember. I spoke about, I spoke about how God is not um, done with us yet. Like uh, my grandmother time is up, but we're still here. God is not finished with it yet. So I remember I, I did that. And I, I spoke, spoke about that. And I got through my speech without crying and stuff. It was amazing for no, I didn't cry throughout that whole day. Um, I'm not, uh, the only time I shed tears was the day that I got the the news, and yeah, so them three days was just them first three days of me being in Ghana was was just uh hectic because we had the reflection night, the wake, and then the funeral, and then with me preaching at the church for the first preaching at my old church for the first time, and uh and it was honestly hard that trip, um. That trip was honestly hard for me because, as I mentioned before, when I go down to Ghana, the two people that I want to see the most is my grandmother and my neighbor. So with this trip, neither one of them are alive no more. So I can't 
go over uh, to my grandmother's house and or go in her house with her and talk to her. I can't go on my neighbor go in his house and talk to them. So it it was that trip was very hard. We had a lot of fun because after the funeral, we went a whole bunch of places, mall, go kart. I went out with my cousins. We had fun. We was enjoying ourselves, but it was just still a hard trip for me knowing that the two people that I want to see the most when I'm down here, I wasn't able to see. So that really, that really hit, that really hit me. And I was just, I was just like hurt. It was going through my, going through feelings while I was down there. And I was just trying to, whatever activity we was doing, what we was doing, I was trying to just be focused on that to get my mind off of um everything. And I enjoyed the rest of that trip. And once we got back, once we got back, um, that's when I truly broke down about that situation. Kind of like the same thing with my neighbor. Uh, that's when I truly broke down about that situation. Uh, and I just truly expressed like my emotions and everything that I was feeling at that point. Because before then, I didn't truly, I didn't do it because I didn't cry. To, I didn't cry the day of the funeral. I didn't do, do I didn't do any like proper crying. Like the only crying I did was the day when I got the news. I shed a little bit of tears, but it wasn't like balling tears a lot just a little bit so i broke down that day just broke down about both losses and stuff it it, it was just it was just hard for me just going through those that because it was back-to-back months april and may and then um june for the funeral so it just it just really hurt and everything and i was just trying to move past it and getting into uh july the beginning of july uh prison close to me got sick and that kind of hit me because i'm like another i'm like another person uh that person got sick so i was just that just hit me too because somebody really close to me got sick and then towards the end of that month um my aunt died my aunt who's my grandmother's sister uh she she died so once i got that news like that news didn't probably hit my head um I'm like, it ain't that news didn't hit me. Not in my head, but that news didn't really hit me till the next day because I, I got that news the Sunday. And then the Monday, that news hit me. And I remember that Monday I was talking about it. And I'm like, and I, I just I just broke down. I was crying. I was bawling. Because I'm like, these last four months have really not been fair. Cause April, my neighbor died. May, my grandmother died, June, the funeral, and now July, a third person. So at that point, I was feeling, I'm like, God, like, I can't catch a break. Like, I, I, I can't catch a break because these last three three years have been difficult for me in my personal life because I, uh, I've went through certain stuff for these last three years that um I was still, like, recovering some, still healing from. So once these things happened, um, I really got irritated and mad. Um, after all three situations happened, because I'm like, God, I already got my own personal stuff that I'm trying to deal with, I'm trying to recover from, and now three more things happened, so I was just really just broken down, crying, I was mad, I was angry, all of that, because I'm like, I just can't catch a break, these last four months ain't been fair to me, and with August coming up, I'm like, I don't have any high hopes for August, honestly, the way it's going, I feel like somebody else is going to die, and I was just, I was just really just, just broke, broken by um all three deaths. And I was, I was just breaking down. I was just crying. I was mad. Just going through all that um emotion and things. And through, throughout this time, my mentors and my friends have been with me. I'm talking to them. I'm letting them know and things like that. So it, it was just honestly just hard. Um these last four months um, with all three of the deaths and then the nun- and then also the person close to me getting sick and they're recovering now, thank God. But it, w- it was just honestly hard and it had been difficult. And I, I'd stayed, I stayed at the word um, through this time. I wasn't in the word too much uh, at all because I was just honestly mad at God because I'm like, God, I just can't honestly catch a break these last four months just been hitting me with stuff like i got my own personal stuff that i'm trying to deal with and more stuff just keep adding on like i honestly i was just i was just real mad i was just angry and 
I'm talking with my mentors and my mentors telling me, remember that word that you preach? Because um, for my first time preaching in Ghana, that uh, the Sunday the day before my grandma's funeral, I spoke about why trials and tribulation is important. While I was writing that, I wasn't thinking about my current situation because when I when I was writing that, my grandmother and my neighbor already died. Um, so I, I wasn't writing to my current situation when I wrote why trials and tribulations are important. I was writing about the bullying experience, how that was a trial and tribulation that I went through, and that ended up becoming a blessing onto my life. And I spoke about the positive and negative that came out of that. I was writing about that. I wasn't writing to my current situation of the, uh, the deaths that I experienced. But um, my mentor was telling me that that word that you preach applied to your situation now. And at first, I really, I really did not want to hear that. Uh, I wanted to hear something else, but I'm so glad he told me that because after I got off the phone with him, um, I'm thinking, I was like, it really does. That does apply to my situation. And I went back and I looked at everything I wrote. And I'm like, that does apply to my situation. And I'm like, it's not God funny because when I was writing that, I wasn't thinking about my current situation, but um, God was speaking through me when I was writing and he knew that what I wrote was going to apply to me later on. So I started to, I started to look at the situation differently. Instead of looking at it, uh, at, instead of looking at, uh, at it as God, why, why another person, why another person gone? Why, why do you, why do you keep giving me, hitting me with stuff every single month for these last four months? I started to look at it as in trials and tribulations are important. We go through stuff in life with all of us for a purpose, either teach you a lesson or help you grow. And I, I started to look at it at that um at that point. And this week, um, I just I just sat down with myself, have a conversation about uh these deaths and the positive and negative that came out of it. And just have to understand that uh all three of all three of the people that died for me, um, it was all their time, it was their time to go. Cause I understand that we all have a time. Um, to go, we all have a time that we would um, leave this earth. So I wasn't mad that they're not. I was just mad at the timing of it. But God operates on his timing and not earth, not ours. So I had to understand that. And I understand that all three of them were sick. Uh, my neighbor was sick for years. Grandma was sick for years. Mom was sick for years. So they all been sick. And now they're no longer feeling that sickness. And they're no longer hurting. Now there with the Lord, and I was looking at it at that standpoint, and I also looked at it um, from the positive that came uh, that came out um, from my Guyana trip, because when my grandmother died, uh, I, I was able to go down there speaking at her funeral, so she was able to look down from heaven at me, seeing me speaking at her funeral. I know she was proud, and I know she was happy, because now she's seeing her, her youngest grandson, yeah, I am the youngest grandson. I'm seeing her youngest grand. Well, I'm the youngest grandchild, but she's seeing her youngest grandchild as one holder is speaking. He's working in in God's faith. He's letting God use him. And my grandmother was a big church lady. Um, I don't think anybody could outdo her when it comes to church lady. She loved church to the fullest. And as I mentioned before, with the behavior and me doing good, she was able to see the the um new version. And me before she died, and and I was saying I'm so thankful that she was able to do that because that would have destroyed me if my grandmother didn't get to see this side of me. If I was still in my own mindset, if I was still operating the old me, that would have destroyed me inside. Um, if I was still acting that way and knowing that my grandmother loved this earth without seeing me change, so that made me very proud that I was able to change and be me now, and she was able to see this version of me. She was able to see the preacher, the preacher, the motivational speaker, editor, like she got to see this new version of me with everything that I'm doing. So I was very proud of that situation. And uh, I got to speak due to being down at um at that um funeral. I got to speak, being down in Ghana for the funeral. I got to speak at my old church, accomplishing a dream that I had since I was five. I, I always wanted to um I do that. And I got to share that speech. I got to share that um that sermon with you guys because it was a point sermon. And my neighbor, I got to see him that last time. And when I went down April, I got to see both my neighbor and my grandmother um, for one last time. They got, both of them got to see this new version of me. 
And I think that's the thing that made me the most happy that they both got to see the new version of me, the, the good as one, the no longer in trouble as one, no longer fighting as one, the, the no longer on his old self stuff as one, the new good version of me. I was so happy that they got to see this version of me because they seen the old version of me. They seen the, the bad behavior. They seen the, um, the, this, just all the old things I used to do. Either they seen it or hurt. Um, it, so I always, I remember uh, anytime you had to um, answer those questions from my grandmother when I was still my old stuff. Um, I'm not going to lie, it used to hurt me that I couldn't, re- couldn't report good news to her, but um, I was able to report good news to her in that April. And not only just my grandmother, like my family parent was just proud of me when I was down there for that, for that funeral. Everybody was just proud of me because they they seen the old they seen the old as one because like I said I was bad in Ghana I was bad over here too I was I was worse over here but everybody got to see that new version that ele- that elevation of Ezron the that with everything I'm doing like everybody's proud that I'm no longer in trouble they proud that I'm making my YouTube videos I'm preaching I'm doing all that they proud so um a lot of good came out of um that trip i was able to see a lot of people that i haven't seen in years because you know funeral bring people together so people from all over came down for that funeral so i got to see a whole bunch of people i got to hang out with my cousins at the mall go go kart i had to do a lot of things and uh, i started to look on the positive side and i started to just reminisce on my sermon of how trials and tribulations are important and how they're bound to happen but they're there to help you grow, teach you a lesson of both. And I I have say that um I just um I've learned lessons from these last three that's these last four months, everything that's going on. And I'm just continue growing and I have my peoples around me, my friends, my mentors, um, shout out to them. I had them around me this whole time, helping me, giving me wisdom, giving me advice, telling me as I am focused on the feelings because I was completely trying to suppress everything and I wasn't trying to um talk about every talk about my feelings, talk about what was going on, and like I said, I was very distant in the word, but I'm I'm coming back to the word, I'm coming back into the word, I'm reading, I'm praying more, I'm doing stuff like that because in times like this, you got to draw closer to God. I was drawing far there from him instead of drawing closer um, to him. We should always draw closer to God, not only just in trials and tribulation times, but draw closer to God in general. But especially for me in this time, I should have, I should have been drawing closer to God, but I was drawing farther away from him. But um, I was able to recognize my wrong of drawing closer to him. I mean, drawing farther from him. And through my mentors and stuff and just having the people there for me, because I have my I have my mentor, my friend there for me from the jump. They've been they've been with me through these last four four months with everything that's going on. So I just love them for sticking with me and just being with me through this time. And I know a lot of people <laughs> haven't uh, know about this, because if you if you don't know me personally and not family, you don't know about these deaths. Cause I haven't I haven't I don't think I've spoken about them um at all on this channel uh, but um my grieving process is getting better right now getting better right now um being more open to just talk about how i feel uh if i gotta break down if i gotta cry if i'm mad feeling any type of way because it's okay for me to feel um the feelings of um it's okay for me to feel the feelings of these deaths but as long as I'm uh, I'm not sinning, I'm just doing it the correct way. Because it both says that be angry and sin not. So I'm still, I'm making sure that whatever feeling or whatever thing I'm processing, it's not against the Lord. I'm not doing it in a, no type of like bad or unhealthy way. So I'm heavily focused on um, that. And my grieving process, I've gotten way better. I've gotten way better. I'm talking more with myself. Uh, I'm talking more with my mentors, telling them how I feel, telling them about everything. I'm praying more. Uh, I'm crying more because I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. These deaths, all three of these deaths hurt, and with them happening in the window of four months, hurt. So, um, I just want everybody to send some send some healing, uh, my way. Send some prayer. Send some prayer my way. Just pray for me. 
uh, so that I will continue my my process of recovering and healing from everything that went on. But overall, these last four months they've been hard. Um, but I was still able to get everything that I needed to get done because I wanted to still grieve, but I didn't want to stop anything I was doing. So as you guys seen, I've been putting out, I've been still putting out my videos on both my channels. I still been doing stuff in my personal life campus this week i'm still a part of that um i had uh i had summer classes this week not summer school but summer classes that i chose to take to um further my education and receive more knowledge um i was still able to do that through everything and um i'm still able to function because uh i know that god have those people i mean god um was ready for both my grandmother I know, I know that God was ready for my grandmother, my daughter, and my aunt. So I'm no way, shape, or form mad or angry at their they're going in or the timing. I'm no longer mad at um them going <laughs> going away and their timing uh of their death, anything like that. I'm just sending um glory to God that uh that He is continuing to be with um the family and also guys send some prayer towards um uh, my family uh, for all those that are grieving um to the dead uh send some thing send them uh prayer towards our way and i very much appreciate that and these these just these um last three deaths for these last four months have taught me a lot i've grown from it my mindset is just changing it, it just taught me a lot um and the the um the four months I've came with a lot, but I've seen um the good that came out of it. So I'm not letting the good, I'm not letting the bad outshadow the good. But um my next trip to Guyana, whenever that is, I'm not gonna lie to you. That might be, I know that would be a little bit hard for me because um both my neighbor, my grandmother, and my aunt, I got to see all three of them uh alive when I was there in April. Uh then when I went down in July, no, when I went down in June, sorry, when I went down in June, I got to see my um aunt for that last time. So um, I'm just happy that I got to see all three of them before their passing. I'm happy that they got to see this um upgraded version of Ezron, the good Ezron, the um just the new me. Uh, that's what I'm I'm the most proud of because I said it earlier. That would that would have hit me to the core if none of them got to see this good version of me. And I know everybody's proud of the me that I am today because I'm no longer getting in trouble. I'm no longer um, having that bad reputation. And I got a good reputation. Wherever I go, it's always good things people say. Um, comes People say about me, my character, anything I do. Uh, because honestly, I don't miss the old me. I don't miss them getting in trouble. I don't miss... Uh, the reputation I used to, I don't miss that at all. And I won't ever go back to that because it, it just wasn't good times. And I knew that wasn't me. That was just a phase I was going through. But it was a phase that I was supposed to go through because everything that we go through in life is meant for a purpose because it helps us become the person that we are today. Um, So that phase was a bad phase, but it helped me become the person I am today. So I'm thankful for it. Um, I'm thankful for that phase. And uh. I'm just continuing my just my grieving process. Uh, I'm handling it way better and getting help from my mentors, my friends. So I just wanted to just tell you guys and open up about uh, what I've been going through so far and how have my mindset changed about the uh, stuff I've been going through and how I'm improving. So if you're going through um, your grieving process right now due to people dying around you, just know that we all have a time to go. Um, God has called you. Uh, the person to come and he will be with you. Just continue to stick with God, draw closer to him, um, listen to him, let him let him guide you, uh, talk to the people around you uh, to be able to handle your grieving in a healthy way, uh, in the best way as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. Uh, I appreciate you guys so much. I love you guys so much for just always continuing to coming back and watch my videos. Um, this was the end of my videos. Uh, this was the end of my video. Grieving from that. So, we guys enjoyed.
E yeah, it's for the end of video. My video. I don't know what else I'm gonna talk about, but this is then. Um, thank you guys for watching. This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe if you're new. Please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will send your notification. This is motivation for young Christian. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>